Got a minute? Zone of Proximal Development 2. Can't let it go, can you? What? This Goldilocks zone thing. Yeah, well, it's pretty important. Okay, then how about another example of the Goldilocks zone? Math is a good one. I hate math. I know, you told me. I'll bet that if your teachers had kept you in the Goldilocks zone, you wouldn't hate math. Not likely. Most students in math class at any given time are either bored or overwhelmed. I was never bored. Just overwhelmed? Yeah, I was always lost. So you were never in the Goldilocks zone? If you mean the just right zone, then no, I was never there. So you never got support for learning a new concept until you had mastered it? Nope. We were expected to keep up with everyone else. You mean keep up with the teacher's schedule? Yeah, they were determined to get through the book by the end of the school year, regardless of how many of us got left behind. That's too bad. Math builds one concept on another. Like building a wall. Yeah, you need to learn to add before you multiply. And multiply before you divide. Yep, can't go straight to division if you don't know your multiplication tables. I can now. My phone has a built-in calculator. Ah! How do I help my kid stay in the zone? For what? Math? Sports? Art? Okay, learning to draw. He can trace a line drawing of a squirrel, but he can't draw a squirrel on his own. So if the guiding lines for the squirrel gradually disappear as he gets better at that drawing, that's an example of keeping him in the zone of not too hard, not too easy. Interesting. How about cooking? He watches you make an omelet. He does his own with your instructions. He does the next one with you available to answer questions and so on. So the basic idea is to give enough support so that they can engage and then withdraw the support gradually as they begin to master the skill. I could not have said it any better.